everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our California Regional Webinar for Gonzaga University. We're going to give folks just a minute um, or two to join us before we fully get started. But as you enter, if you would like to put in the chat where you are um, joining us within the state of California, I'm sure we've got folks up and down the coast, go ahead and put your hometown and where you're zooming in from um, in the chat for us right now. Okay, so we see someone from Lafayette, welcome. Woodland Hills, Long Beach, Los Angeles, El Cerrito. Yeah, we are really up and down the coast. That is so exciting. Awesome. Perfect. Well, we'll go ahead and get started because, of course, we want to be as timely as possible. Um, so we're going to start with some introductions. So my name is Alexa Gasky. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm an assistant director of admission at Gonzaga. I'm also a GU alum. I graduated back in 2017, and I'm originally from Burbank, California. So I love my California Zags. Welcome to our webinar specifically for students from California. I work with students in Southern California, starting at about Santa Barbara County, down through Orange County inland, and I'll be one of your hosts tonight. Um, you may have noticed that you aren't able to turn on your camera or audio, but we would still love to hear from you. Um, so please, throughout the presentation, utilize the Q&A function to ask those questions, and we're going to try to get as many as to, to answer as many as we're able. Um, I do have some several colleagues um, and some of our current students here with us tonight that I'd like you to meet. So we're going to start with my co-host, Becky. Hi all, thank you guys for coming tonight. Um, my name is Becky Dua. I'm a mission, I'm an admission counselor here at Gonzaga, um, but I work with students primarily from like the East Bay area. So I saw a couple of Lafayette, Danville, um, and Oakland area, as well as along the central coast down all the way to San Luis Obispo County. Um, but I'm also from Burbank, California as well. So definitely love to be on these California webinars. Awesome, and we'll pass it to Sarah. Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Welchel and I'm also an admission counselor at Gonzaga. I primarily support students who are in far north California and then all the way down to South San Jose. Not from California, but love to work with all of our students here and I'm glad to have you all. And Rosa. Hi everyone, my name is Rosa Velasco. I use she, her, hers, a of pronouns. I'm also an admission counselor here at Gonzaga and I primarily work with San Diego students. I saw a couple of you guys up there, so hello. And as well as some students in Sacramento. Awesome, and now we're gonna pass it on to introduce some of our current students and we're gonna start with Hadley. Hi everyone, my name's Hadley Stevick. I'm from San Carlos, California in the Bay Area and I'm a junior here at Gonzaga. Josh? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Josh David. Uh, I'm a junior at GU, and I study biology, and I am from San Francisco, California. And Annabelle. Hi, everyone. My name is Annabelle Salinger. I'm a nursing student, and I'm a first year at Gonzaga from Portland, Oregon. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, we'll definitely have time to hear from our students a little bit later during our student panel. But as I said, please keep those questions going in the Q&A as they come up. Um, and we're going to try to answer as many as we can. But we'll go ahead and get started. Gonzaga University is a medium-sized Catholic liberal arts university in the Jesuit tradition, and we're located in the heart of Spokane, Washington. As stated in our mission statement, Gonzaga educates students for lives of leadership and service for the common good. Gonzaga has four distinct pillars that are at the core of our education. That first pillar is academic excellence. Jesuits believe in learning by doing. We pride ourselves in providing an active learning environment that includes research, internships, design projects, and practicing in college what you will do in your field. Additionally, our core curriculum includes classes such as reasoning, human nature, ethics, speech and communication, and more. These courses focus on developing critical thinking, excellent communication skills, reflection, and action. 
Our students develop into contemplatives in action. We recognize the importance of reflection and taking what we learn inside the classroom into our communities. We reinforce these skills needed to make well-informed and ethical decisions, as well as the skills to put those decisions into actions. Learning is a lifelong process and our students collaborate with faculty and each other throughout their journey at Gonzaga. The third pillar is leadership development. At GU, we believe that every student is a leader and that leadership manifests itself in a variety of different ways. Students have the opportunity to develop their skills through club participation, student government, and formalized programs like our Comprehensive Leadership Program or the Hogan Entrepreneurial Leadership Program. Finally, we develop students into people who are for and with others. As a community, we contribute about 80,000 hours of community service. Social justice issues are at the forefront of all of our classes and students learn and experience what it means to be in solidarity with the marginalized populations. We are in the top 10 in sending students to the Peace Corps for mid-sized schools and many of our students go on to Teach for America, Jesuit Volunteer Corps, AmeriCorps, and many others. There are a lot of opportunities to get involved on campus through our Center for Community Engagement and work with a variety of populations. Awesome. And you can see here that there are some statistics about Gonzaga and some different resources that we have in place just to support our students on campus. Um, so while we are Catholic at Jesuit University, students don't have to be Catholic to attend Gonzaga. Um, we do have over 31 different faiths represented in our undergraduate student body. Um, and the Office of Mission and Ministry helps support students' spiritual needs at the individual level. Uh, our Un Unity Multicultural Education Center and the Lincoln LGBTQ Plus Resource Center have two pillars, education and celebration. Um, they're both here to ensure that whoever you are and however you identify, you're welcome and supported on our campus. The new student and family program supports our students in their transition to college life. The Center for Student Academic, Academic Success assists students by providing everything from general academic advising, providing accommodation to students with learning differences, and assisting students with in developing learning strategies as well. So these statistics share more of an insight into how Gonzaga supports our students and their outcomes. With our small class sizes, students have access to their professors and can receive the help they need in their classes. 94% of our students at GU um, could choose to continue after their first year. Uh, this is one of the strongest retention rates in higher education. So not only are we able to support our students while they're on campus, um, but also our 95% success rate shows that our students are able to succeed um, once they've graduated as well, even in a pandemic. Um, and then 95% of our students over the last three graduating classes are either fully employed, seeking graduate degrees, are in the military, or, or are participating in service programs like the Peace Corps at least six months after graduation. And so we are a med medium-sized university with five schools on our campus with over 75 academic programs. Um, but the first school that students can study under is our College of Arts and Sciences. So this covers everything from applied math to writing, and it is our largest school on campus. Uh, Jesuits believe in learning by doing, and you'll find that tradition is alive and well here at Gonzaga. Uh, so there are vast opportunities to do research in the sciences and social sciences. Students in integrated media have their own TV station, podcast channel, and newspaper, and there are multiple literary publications on our campus. Uniquely, we also have a partnership with the University of Washington to deliver a medical school in our region, with Gonzaga delivering the coursework and UW managing those clinical placements. This helps provide a rich environment for the health sciences on campus with research, mentoring programs, and professors who work with undergraduates and medical students. This new building provides new classroom space and houses our, new, our human physiology department. The School of Business Administration is a top 100 program in the nation with a top 30 accounting program. The school offers two programs, Business Administration and Accounting, both of which offer fifth year master's programs. A student, in, a student in Business Administration gets a broad business background while tailoring their degree by studying one of 10 concentrations in their interests. There is time to study more than one concentration. For example, a student can do a double concentration in entrepreneurship and finance or marketing and international business or any other combination. There are also eight minors available to students who do not major in business. 
And our next school is our School of Education. So we offer majors in Community Cultural Language, Special Education, Kinesiology with a Fitness Specialty, or Health and Physical ed Education Pedagogy um, concentrations, and then also Sport Management. So there are also credential programs for elementary and secondary education, um, which provides students with reciprocity, allowing them to eat, teach in all 50 states. Um, so students work all four years in various schools and classrooms, basically applying and practicing theory learned at Gonzaga in our classrooms. The Community Culture and Language Program is designed for students interested in community education, such as attaining a certificate in teaching English as a second language or in elementary education, where the program seeks to provide a practical understanding of the ways culture, cultures and languages support communities. Sport management students are required to complete two internships by the time that they graduate, um, providing great experience in school and in the sports industry too. And next up we have the School of Engineering and Applied Science. Um, so it's a top 25 school for programs with a master's as the highest degree available. Um, we offer computer science and data science um, and biomedical, civil, computer, electrical, and mechanical engineering, as well as engineering management too, um, which is basically a combination of engineering and business with a fifth year MBA option. So all engineering students take the same curriculum their first year. So there is some flexibility for students who don't know what area of engineering they wanna go into or are unsure of their choice so far. Um, but the programs are all hands-on with design projects and opportunities for both research and collaboration across disciplines on our campus. So for example, there's an engineering club which basically works on RoboSub made by students from computer science and mechanical, electrical, and civil engineering. Uh, and together they build a robotics submarine and take it to engineering competitions with other colleges and universities. So overall, our engineers boast an 89% pass rate on the fundamentals of engineering exams. So a really impressive number for them too. Our integrated science and engineering facility opened last fall. It provides students of all majors with a space that fosters innovative learning. This new facility boasts a sizable 83,000 square feet and 18 different types of labs for collaborative undergraduate research. We are providing our students across STEM with the support, space, and resources they need to take their research to the next level. Our final school is the School of Health Science, which offers majors in public health, nursing, and human physiology. The nursing program is direct admission and students apply as seniors in high school. Healthcare is the number one industry in Spokane and students do six rotations of clinical placements in junior and senior years, working one-on-one -on -one with nurses. Our students have had great success, marked by a 94% first time pass rate of the NCLEX last year. As for human physiology, it is a deep dive into one organism, the human body. The focus is on anatomy, physiology, and kinesiology. All students are required to do research projects, and the major is great on its own, but it's also a popular choice for students on the pre-med or pre-physical therapy tracks. And one of my favorite things to talk about, so a popular experience at Gonzaga is studying abroad. Um, so 63% of our students studying abroad at some time at, during their four years at GU. So typically in your junior year, but there's been an increase in participation in the spring of sophomore year as well. Um, but students have about 30 different countries and around 50 different programs to choose from when studying abroad, with our campus in Florence, Italy being our flagship program. Um, but some other examples of study abroad locations are Buenos Aires, Paris, Japan, Barcelona, Cape Town, as well as New Zealand too. With so many options, students of all majors, even engineering and nursing, have the opportunity to study abroad all over the world. So when students go abroad, they have the options to live in a residence hall for U.S. students, or they can live in a homestay with a local family. Students also have the options to study abroad for a semester, an entire year, or over the summer. For Gonzaga-sponsored programs, it is important to note that tuition is going to be the same as Gonzaga, and financial aid packages will apply for students studying abroad during the fall or spring semesters. And by providing students with a rigorous education, experiential learning opportunities, and numerous services offered by our Center for Career and Professional Development, 95% of Gonzaga's class of 2022 found employment, graduate school, or service opportunities within six months after graduation. Our Center for Career and Professional Development, or what we call CPD, 
uh, offers many different programs for students and graduates of Gonzaga University. But one cool thing is Zags Connect. We have an online mentoring platform that matches students and graduates with mentors and professions related to their academic major or de desired career field. But we have over 2,000 alumni volunteers ready to mentor our current students um, and help them throughout their career path. But CPD also offers trips called treks, um, and they go to key metropolitan areas across the country, including the Bay Area, Silicon Valley, and Los Angeles, and even to London. Um, but during Trek, students get to interact with partner organizations such as Google, the New York Stock Exchange, Nike, Amazon, and Microsoft as well. But while visiting these organizations and attending career fairs in these different cities, students interact with professionals and organizations to expand their professional network and learn how Gonzaga can have an impact on their professional careers. And lastly, CPD offers internship and career fairs in Spokane throughout the academic year for our students. From all of our schools, our graduates work in a variety of sectors and continue on to graduate programs across the country. Some of our top employers include Amazon, Boeing, Jesuit Volunteer Corps, Providence Health and Services, Spokane Public Schools, and West Monroe Partners. And some of our top continuing education institutions are the University of Washington, University of Oregon, University of Portland, Boston University, University of Notre Dame, and Creighton. At Gonzaga, building community is something that we take pride in. Our student population represents students from all over the U.S. and over 40 countries. Our hope is to create a home away from home for you. 82% of students at GU come from over 200 miles away, so we are not a commuter campus. Students really stay over their weekends, build community, and invest their time in Spokane. California is actually the second largest state that we are getting students from. The Hemmingson University Center, which you saw in the beginning of this video and we'll see throughout, is designed for community development and engagement with a lot of space for just hanging out and studying. There's also a variety of dining options from the COG, or All You Care to Eat dining program, to um, Qdoba and Starbucks. This building allows student involvement and leadership, weekend social events, dining, faith development, global engagement, and more, all to be under one roof. Leadership and involvement are important and helpful for our students on campus. We offer opportunities in student body government, residence life, community engagement, cultural clubs, political and, ad political and advocacy based clubs, and unique clubs like Man Best Friend or Harry Potter Club. All first time first year students must live on campus for their first two years at GU. We offer three different styles of living, community based halls, suites, and apartments. Apartments tend to only be available to students after their first year. There are also co-ed, gender inclusive, male only and female only housing options. And within housing, we have living learning communities or LLCs, which provide students with themed programming that can center on outdoor experiences, leadership, service, global citizenship, the honors program or more. And it is possible that you may have heard about us through our successful men's and women's basketball teams, but we do offer over 12 other different Division I sports that compete in our West Coast Conference. Um, but all NCAA sporting events are free to attend for students, but be prepared to wait a little bit longer in line for those basketball tickets. Uh, you may see a photo of tents on the slide and wonder how that applies to athletics on our campus, um, but I'm here to tell you that camping out for some of our basketball games is one of the biggest traditions of the year. Um, so in the past, our students have camped out for games against Arizona, BYU, UNC, St. Mary's, UCLA, um, and lot, lots of fun experiences with that too. But Gonzaga also offers intramural sports, which over 50% of students participate in on our campus. Um, but we have intramural sports such as soccer, volleyball, flag football, basketball, inner tube basketball, um, pickleball, and badminton on our campus. So in addition to NCAA and intramural sports, we also do have club sports teams. Um, club sports require students to try out and are a great way for you to keep competing at a high level in sports that you've been playing in your own whole life. But some of the sports that we offer for men and women are basketball, soccer, volleyball, and rugby. So in addition to the various athletic opportunities in place for students, there are a lot of ways in students interested in the visual and performing arts can continue to pursue their passions too. Our Myrtle Woltson Performing Arts Center opened in the spring of 2019, and it has transformed the performing arts on our campus. So the Woltson Center hosts performances by our students, as well as welcomes guest performances to campus. 
We offer many different opportunities within music, dance, and theater. Students interested in continuing their music career in college can apply for music-based scholarships, highly recommend, even if they do not plan to major or minor in music at Gonzaga. Also located on our campus is our Junt Art Museum, and Junt hosts our studio-based art academic programs, as well as many different exhibits throughout the year. Our art students host exhibits on campus and have also worked with our Center for Community Engagement and worked on murals in Spokane. Gonzaga is located in Spokane, Washington, which is the second largest city in the state with over 700,000 people living within the region and 225,000 in the city itself. You can see a glimpse of Gonzaga in the middle of the slide below the river. Just look above the spires of St. Al's Church. Um, it's across the river from the city center and is only a half mile or about a 15 to 20 minute walk from downtown. Additionally, the Spokane International Airport is a 15 minute drive from campus. You can fly nonstop to Spokane from SFO, Oakland, Sacramento, San Jose, LAX, John Wayne, and San Diego. There are also one stop options from other airports in California, so we're pretty easy to get to. While students are allowed to bring cars to GU all four years, we also offer a free bus pass with your student ID card. Spokane also offers plenty of opportunities to find jobs or internship opportunities, whether that be working with local entrepreneurs through our Hogan Entrepreneurship Program or being a data analyst for a Vista Energy company. The city of Spokane's slogan is creative by nature, and you can really see that through the lar two largest state parks in Washington being within an hour of our city. We've also got five ski resorts within 90 miles, Riverfront Park in downtown Spokane, live music venues ranging from small and local concerts to really large scale acts. We've got a vibrant uh, restaurant scene with plenty of art exhibitions and four distinct seasons that consist of 260 days of sun, but also two to three feet of snowfall in the, each year. Each year, Spokane also hosts um, some major events, including Hoop Fest, which is the world's largest three-on-three -three basketball tournament, and Bloom's Day, which is a 12K run put on by the city of Spokane. There are many benefits to attending college out of state. Nationally, the six-year college graduation rate is 62.3%. Gonzaga's six-year graduation rate is an 88% and a four-year graduation rate of 74%. Additionally, attending college out of state allows students to experience growth in confidence and independence. It also allows for them to explore a new region of the country and be exposed to new cultures. Now at Gonzaga, we use the Common application for both domestic and international first-year students. Our application deadline is December 1st, so coming up in a couple weeks, uh, but the cost of the Common application is $50. Uh, for those in need of an application waiver for the Common App, there are a few options. Uh, the Common Application has a box you can check where you request a fee waiver for economic reasons and your high school counselor can confirm it. Additionally, Gonzaga alumni have the ability to submit waivers on behalf of students through the alumni page of the GU website. It's under benefits. We never want the inability to pay the application fee to be a barrier to applying for admission at Gonzaga. So please, please, please contact the Office of Admission if you need assistance. Also, we read applications holistically, so we look at five main factors for most of you. Six if you do choose to submit a test score and want to use it, but we are test optional uh, and more about what test optional means in just a moment. Uh, but the first of the five factors is grades and grade trends. So when we look at students' GPA, we also consider their grade trends. So grades going up or down or staying the same throughout the years and circumstances that may have led to that trend too including challenges throughout this pan throughout the pandemic or just like struggling with something going on in your personal life too. And the middle 50% of students enrolled at Gonzaga were between a 3.56 through 3.92 unweighted GPA. So this means that 25% had GPAs below that 3.56 and 25% had GPAs above a 3.92 on an unweighted scale. So we use unweighted GPAs so that all students are on, on the same 4.0 scale, while at the same time, we look at the curriculum separately and giving it considerable weight as well. But all students applying to Gonzaga should have a standard college prep curriculum. So by college prep curriculum, we mean that students should have four years of English, three to four years of math, three years of a social science, and two to three years of the same language, and three to four years of science. We know that more challenging classes can make for students who are better prepared for college. And so we encourage you to take challenging courses that are available to you and still allow for some balance in your life as well. 
Um, in addition to preparing students better for college and therefore factoring into the application and merit scholarship a student may receive, many times students can bring in credits if they meet certain test requirements or the college classes they've taken are equivalent to ones offered at Gonzaga. Um, but we're going to add a link to the chat showing our AP, IB, Cambridge, and dual enrollment policies and equivalencies too. But as a reminder, if you're interested in majoring in nursing, that is one of our direct entry programs, um, our only direct entry program, excuse me. And for intended nursing majors, you need to list your interest in nursing on the application itself. So for nursing applicants, we have a fairly small program, and this is our most competitive major on campus. So the first thing that we look for is four years of math and science in your high school curriculum. So we prefer biology, chemistry, and other life science labs and courses, such as anatomy and physiology, but other sciences are fine too. It is helpful to have some experience shadowing or volunteering in health settings as well, but we recognize that currently this is not possible in all areas um, for students. So students may only enter the nursing program as a first year student as a part of that direct admission program. So since this is not possible in all, or sorry about that, since this is a cohort model program, the reason for that is with students taking their classes and clinicals together, it's just not possible to transfer into the program later on. With the exception of homeschooled students, Gonzaga is test optional for admission for all majors, including nursing, all scholarships, and special programs such as our honors program. In other words, students applying without a test will have the same access to everything that students applying with test scores will have. When a student applies without a test score, we place more emphasis on the evaluation of grades, curriculum, and the writing throughout the application. If you do have a test score, already and are wondering whether or not you should submit it, here are our middle 50 percentages for test scores in the incoming class. So that's a 1265 to a 1410 for the SAT and a 28 uh, to a 32 for the ACT. You are welcome to discuss your specific situation with your admission counselor, but in general, if you're already having a strong curriculum and GPA, you would have to have a pretty high test score or at least um, at the top of or over our middle 50% to have the test score make a difference in your application. Homeschooled students who will have more than 30 semester or 45 quarter credits of transferable credit from a college um, or community college at the time of application do not need to submit a test score, though those who have less college credit are required to do so. For all applicants on our Gonzaga questions page of the common application, you will be asked to mark whether or not you want to have an SAT or ACT count as part of your application. If you mark no, then we will not use your scores, even if, even if you've had it sent to us previously. If you mark yes, we will use your score and we will keep trying to contact you to get your scores if it's missing from your application at the time you apply. If you have taken the same test more than once, we will super score your total score by taking the best from each subsection, such as math and evidence-based reading and writing on the SAT and adding them together. So if you're using your scores, it's always helpful to provide us with all of your scores so that we can use the highest ones from each subsection. Please be in communication with your admission counselor if you change your mind on using a score or not. If we, if we haven't finished our evaluation process, then we will make the change for you. We expect December 23rd to be the date after which we are unable to change a student's test optional status. International students, you do still have to submit a test to show English proficiency. We'll put a link in the chat where you can um, look through the options and requirements for having English proficiency during, uh, such as using the Duolingo test. If your scores are below our English proficiency guidelines and you don't qualify for a waiver, our Gonzaga Global Program may be a good fit for you because it provides English language support that we will um, help you be successful as an undergraduate student at Gonzaga. If you choose to use a test score to meet the English requirement, you still have the option to be test optional for admission. As part of our holistic review, we also consider your commitment uh, to your commitments outside of school activities. We're looking for more, uh, we are looking more for depth in an area rather than that you've done everything offered. Gonzaga is a very community oriented place and our students get involved on campus and in the community. So we seek students who enjoy being involved, starting new clubs, serving as a leader in, their, in some capacity and engaging in their communities. Please note that working, volunteering, and family responsibilities are important to list as they show responsibility, dependability, and engagement in your community. We don't value one type of activity over another, such as sports over music or music over DECA. We're interested in all of the talents, passions, and abilities you bring to our college community. 
The common application also requires an essay, and there's a short answer question on our Gonzaga questions page, and another one that will appear if you mark yourself as a nursing major. Finally, there's a section on the Common App that allows you to address any hardships or issues you've had as, as a result of COVID, natural disasters, and there's a section where you can address dips in your grades or other academic or personal challenges and recoveries. We do encourage you to use these sections if they apply to you, so you can give us more context for your personal situation, environment, and academic history. As we are a community that really cares about one another, the final piece we look at is your character as seen through a letter of recommendation from an academic subject teacher. So someone who you've had in a class and not just a coach. And your secondary school report, which is filled out by your high school counselor or school office. A letter from your high school counselor is not required, though if your counselor sends one, we will add it to your final. And a final option is to do an interview with a counselor. And as you can see, we highly recommend that for students with a 3.2 GPA or lower, um, or anyone who just feels the need um, to have a talk with an admission counselor, may better help explain their academic history or personal needs a little bit better. Um, but we're also happy to meet with students no matter what their GPA and academics show. Um, as the more we know about you, the better we can connect you to special opportunities at Gonzaga, such as separate application scholarships that may be a good fit for you, um, but we offer interviews via phone, video chat, and in person if you were able to visit too. And you can sign up for them on our virtual Gonzaga and visit Gonzaga pages. We will put in the chat too. And Gonzaga is consistently ranked as one of the best value schools by US News and World Report. Um, so all students are considered for non-need-based merit scholarships when they apply for admission to Gonzaga. Merit scholarships are based on a holistic review of each student's application. Last year, 99% of students received merit scholarships and or grants. Um, if a student is awarded a merit scholarship and or a need-based Gonzaga grant, those award amounts will remain the same for four years at GU. For need-based aid, students and families should file the FAFSA form. For those who are in ineligible for the FAFSA, you can submit our needs analysis form on our website. The priority deadline to submit the FAFSA is February 1, um, but the FAFSA opens up in December on December 31st this year, and we will be hosting a webinar with our financial aid office on November 29th to walk through the new FAFSA update, so highly recommend attending that webinar as well. Um, there are also additional scholarships on our website that you can explore that students will be automatically reviewed for based on the information on their common application. And these include scholarships based on academic interests like business or involvement in leadership and service. So there are also additional application-based scholarships such as music scholarships and for our honors program. The deadlines for these scholarships is January 1st and for music scholarships, it's February 12th. Um, therefore, students must apply for these scholarships before receiving their admission decision to Gonzaga. If you have questions about Gonzaga admission or financial aid, you can see the contact information for all of our admission counselors that work with students from California on this page. We'll also put the link in the chat to connect you with our, your admission counselor. We're now gonna transition to our student panel for um, uh, the rest of this event. Um, so we are gonna check in though with some of our moderators to see if there's any questions that we should answer out loud for admissions before we get into um, our student panel. So Rosa or Sarah, are there any questions that Becky and I should address out loud? There's just one admissions one that's currently pending and it's when do you hear back on application decisions? Great question. So as Becky mentioned, um, our application deadline is December 1, and we hope to get admission decisions to you all by mid to late February. So we're going to work really hard to get an answer to you as soon as we can. But of course, we also want to take our time and um, honor all of the effort and hard work you've put into your application. So mid to late February is when you can expect an admission decision from us. But I'll go ahead and stop sharing screen now um, and hand it over to um, Josh, Annabelle, and Hadley. If you all could reintroduce yourselves and put in the um, uh, your name, major, year, um, and where you're from, and then we'll get ahead, go ahead and get started with that student panel. All right, my name is Hadley Stevick. I'm from San Carlos, California. I'm a junior here at Gonzaga, and I'm studying environmental studies with minors in general business and Spanish. 
My name is Annabelle Salinger. I'm a first year student here at Gonzaga and I am a nursing major from Portland, Oregon. Hello, uh, I'm Josh David. Uh, I'm a junior studying biology and uh, I'm from San Francisco, California. All right, awesome. Thank you all so much for those introductions. Um, first question that we have in the chat for our current students um, is how have you developed community since moving to Gonzaga from out of state? Um, I think that a really helpful thing for me in developing community was joining like clubs and intramurals and stuff. It's a really good way to get to know people with common interests as you. Um, I also am participating in the honors program and due to the small class sizes, I think that's really helped me get to know people. Yeah, I think intramurals are another really great option to get involved. Um, there's another question that kind of is similar, asking about those first couple weeks here at Gonzaga. And we have an intramural that's a great option for those first year students. That's the freshman games. That's two different sports. It varies from year to year, but that's a great way to make a team with some people that you've met, get to meet people on other teams, and really just bond with your first year class. All right, awesome. We can move to the next question. Um, what has been your favorite part about living in Spokane or Washington State? Um, for me, that's been the proximity to the outdoors. There's a lot of really great options that were mentioned in the presentation, but there's things like ski club. We're near a couple different ski areas. There's Gonzaga Outdoors that will take you on different camping, hiking trips like that. Um, and then there's also just opportunities to get outside right near campus, including the uh, Centennial Trail. So outdoors is a really, really great way to get to meet Spokane. You can access pretty much anything downtown by just walking on the Centennial Trail. It's about 20 minutes to downtown from campus. We also have really great public transportation in Spokane, so you really don't need a car to access anything that you want to go to in Spokane. And then I would also agree that we have just like great natural resources in the surrounding area. My roommates and I like to go camping a lot of weekends and on hikes, and there's a lot of really beautiful natural areas that we are within a short driving distance. Awesome. The next question we have is, since you're from out of state, what were your first weeks like being at Gonzaga and away from home? Um, I'd say that it, it was a lot to get, uh, adjust to uh, coming from San Francisco, which is like a big city, uh, to Spokane, which is a lot slower paced, I'd say. And yeah, it was a, a bit of a culture shock, but there were like programs. I was part of Bridge, um, which helped me like transition into school and meet a lot of people. So that was really helpful for me. I think anytime you make a transition like that, it's gonna be overwhelming at times. Um, but I felt like there were a lot of supports in place to help me build community in my first couple weeks and like ease into college. Um, so there's a great orientation program that all freshmen attend um, where you can really get to know people. And then there's also a bunch of pre-orientations, as Josh mentioned, that correlate to different interests that you can be a part of. All right, for our next question, I think this is a popular one for students from California, but coming from California, how was it adjusting to the Spokane weather? I would say that the biggest change for me was when the sun goes down. So 
at this point in the year, the sun's going down at 4.30. Um, into December, it'll be just after four. And that was personally a much bigger change than the weather. Um, I obviously am from an area where it's pretty warm, pretty sunny. Um, and that is kind of similar to the fall and spring in Spokane. Um, we do get a good amount of snow, but not as much as the west side of the state. So the snow is really fun. Um, the sun goes down a lot earlier and it's just a little chillier. I would like to second that the snow is really fun. Um, I think Hadley mentioned that there's a lot of ski resorts nearby. So it's really nice to be able to just have access to that and uh, through the ski club and, and be able to access those places. Awesome. Going along with that question, what was the biggest culture shock moving from California to Washington for you all? That's a really, really good question, actually. Um, I think the biggest one is probably having the actual four seasons. So the leaves fall in the fall. That's really, really beautiful. It's a great time, especially your first year on campus, to get to experience that fall, just like in the movies, some people would describe it. And then we have a really, really nice winter as well. Um, for me, the culture shock was, um, as a person of color, going to a school like Gonzaga, which is a PWI. However, I have noticed that the it's been getting a lot more diverse in the last two years from my freshman year. Um, but it was nice to have uh, cultural groups like the clubs like FASU, Filipino American Student Union, and the events that they throw. And it's, it's nice to meet people and build your community. Um, of people coming from like similar backgrounds as me. All right, in one word, how would you describe the students at Gonzaga University? I would say, oh. I'd say enthusiastic. I would say involved. The word I thought of was prideful. All right, for the next question, um, how successful has your roommate experience been and how was your pairing set up for housing? I have had a really, really positive roommate experience so far. I'm living in a sweet style dorm. So that means that I live with five other girls. Um, and it's been like the best way for me to build community is through meeting those girls and the people that they're friends with. And it's just been a ton of fun. And I met my roommate through the, um, there's like a Zag living site that you'll be put on um, after you're admitted and it will recommend people to you that have similar like living styles to you. And then you can talk to them and see if you think you would be a good fit. And so that's the way that I met my roommates. I had a really good experience. I met, um, my roommate through a group of potential group of incoming freshmen in, um, like a group specifically for our living learning community. I was in People for Others um, my first year. So that worked out really, really well for me. We were really like-minded. We definitely talked a lot before we decided to live together. And um, that was really helpful, just having open communication during the roommate selection process and then throughout the year. Awesome. Hadley, I think we have a specific question for you. Um, you are studying everything I'm interested in. Did you come 
an undeclared first year, I'd probably do business with a bio studies minor. Okay, so I actually came in as a psychology major. Um, that's what I put on my common app, but I spent some time um, my first two years on discernment, really figuring out what I was interested in. And I found that my love for the Spanish language that I'd had in high school continued on into my college education. And I really loved that. I took an introduction to environmental studies class, and that was learned a lot. And I found like it wasn't even work. It was what I was just enjoying and wanting to do everything for that class. Um, and then also the business, I was interested in business for a little while, spent some time as a business major and basically completed the requirements in order to have that business planner. So that's what happened there. Awesome. And on uh, following that, we also have someone asking what the curriculum for environmental science major is like. That's a really good question. So in response to that, which is actually my sister at home, um, that department offers two different options. Um, there's environmental science, which is a bachelor of science. And then there's environmental studies, which is a bachelor of arts. And the bachelor of arts has a little bit fewer courses. I would say probably four fewer required courses. Um, there's more courses in all of the Bachelor of Science programs here. And then um, you do a little bit more specific, like research to inclined classes, things like ecology, um, freshwater biology, um, different things like that. So you can do some really neat hands-on courses in environmental science, but those are also available to the environmental studies majors as well. All right, this can be a question for everybody, but just how is the food and what meal plans have you used and liked? Are there any recommendations? The food on campus is really well regarded by all the students. Um, one of our favorites is the salmon on those Wednesday nights. Uh, that's really fun. I definitely recommend the meal plan that has more bulldog bucks. Um, it just gives you a little bit more flexibility to do things like go to Starbucks with someone. Um, you can use them at Safeway, things like that. So those plans with higher bulldog bucks are definitely a great option if you enjoy flexibility with your dining. All right, thank you. And then another question for everybody. Uh, what is your favorite thing to do off campus? Um, my roommates and I are part of a club called Wags for Zags. And a part of that is a program called Doggy Day Out, where you can essentially take a dog from the shelter for like a day out and about um, to kind of give them a break from that shelter environment. And it's also just really therapeutic, I think, for college students. So one of our favorite things is to do that and go on walks or hikes off campus. Yeah, I'd say the uh, Spokane has a lot of selection for doing things outdoors. Uh, me and my roommates like to go camping, uh, snowboarding, and just go on hikes every once in a while. So I'd say that's very nice to do. Um, yeah, I third that. I also love to spend time outdoors. So I do a lot of skiing um, and then also just walking off campus to uh, downtown locations like Atticus Coffee's a favorite of mine for sure. Um, that's a really great weekend activity and there's plenty to do downtown. 
Awesome. Next question is, how are the dorms? And that's one for everyone. There are a ton of dorm options for your freshman and sophomore year when you're required to live on campus. Um, so there's pretty much a dorm style that's going to fit everybody's needs. Uh, we have living learning communities, which are communities within a dorm um, that are all focused around one center idea. Um, but yeah, there's whatever your interest is or your living style, there's going to be a dorm that accommodates that and has people that generally have that same living style. Yeah, the on-campus housing here is really great. I stayed in Coughlin Hall my first year and Kennedy Apartments my second year. Um, both of them are really great. Uh, just note that Coughlin Hall is only open to students who are a member of an LLC. So apply to those LLCs if you're hoping to stay in Coughlin. I was in Coughlin. Uh, oh, I think I disconnected. But I was in Coughlin uh, my year as well. Uh, in the Learns to Lead LLC, and it's a really good way to stay engaged and um, create a small circle within uh, the big community at Gonzaga. So you meet a lot of new people, and I even live with, I'm a junior, and I live off campus with some people that I met uh, in Cogman. So, yeah. Awesome. Next question. Uh, why did you choose Gonzaga over other universities? Um, I can speak to that one as I made that decision not too long ago. Um, I looked at a ton of universities. I know that like that's a lot of pressure to try and decide on one and try and figure out what encompasses all your needs in a school. Um, for me, I saw that we have some students that are interested in nursing. I think that Gonzaga has a really amazing nursing program that's really well respected by all the hospitals in the area. And something unique is that you're also getting a liberal arts education. So you're able to take courses in a variety of fields. Um, while focusing in on that specific major at the same time. And that's pretty unique um, in all the colleges that I looked at. And then also just the sense of school spirit is pretty much unmatched. All right, awesome. Um, for our next question, have you met mostly Washington State students or are you friends with students from multiple states? I have friends from a variety of different states, um, Colorado, Oregon, Washington, also California. Um, but there's students from all over here, including places like Arizona, um, Idaho, Utah, Hawaii, Alaska, and then also the East Coast. So. There's a good variety for sure. To add on to that, the group of friends that I'm living with right now, uh, I think it's really cool that we all come from different states. So it, it's nice to get to know people from all around the country and and learn how different people are from different states. and and kind of get along that way in that you're different. Awesome, the next question we have is, is Spokane safe? I would definitely say it's safe. Um, I do a lot of walking downtown, walking around campus, things like that. Um, Gonzaga does a lot of work to actively make our community safe, including things like having the blue light phones around campus. They have an app that you can use to notify someone if you don't get where you're trying to go within a certain amount of time. That's called Rave Guardian. And then there's also campus security that'll provide uh, free rides around campus and the surrounding area. So 
if you ever feel uncomfortable, you can use that. But I definitely feel very, very safe here at Gonzaga. Awesome. We have another question specifically for Josh. What do you think of the bio majors and the bio major and is it challenging for you? Um yes, it is challenging, but the faculty is really willing and open to meet with you and during office hours, work with you and, and help you figure out the things that you need to figure out. Um there's they actually opened up um, concentrations for biology recently, and I just joined the ecology major, and it's really exciting because you get to see like all the like upper division electives that you can take uh, within ecology that really gives you, it, it really helps you go in the direction that you want to go because it's, it's very like, uh, you, you get to see the selection of classes that you can take and it's very nice. You can check those out if you search the degree worksheets um, on the Gonzaga website, if you'd like. Awesome. And I believe our last question that we're going to have before we do um, our student raffles, we'll do one, have each student answer is what has been your favorite class at Gonzaga? Um, my favorite, I'm in it right now. It's called Parks, Forests, and Wildlife. It's an environmental studies course, and we got to do some field learning um, out in the North Cascades Wilderness, um, which is like a U.S. Forest Service unit, and we got to meet with local land managers. Um, so that was really, really neat and great field experience. Uh, my favorite class that I'm taking right now is a bio class. It's the bio 105 general bio for um, like biology and nursing students. And I've had so much fun in it because it's they've been applying all the content to like real world situations and health and animals. And um, so you can really kind of see the impacts of what you're learning about. And I've just had a really good experience with the professor. It's been challenging at times and she's just been so supportive and I feel like I've learned so much in just the last couple of months that I've been in that class. Mm, it, it's kind of difficult to pick my favorite class, but I'd say that any of the labs that I've taken, I'm taking OCHEM 2 lab right now, and it's pretty challenging, but it's really fun to apply what you're learning in, in lecture classes and, and learning the techniques and different things that uh, can be done in the labs. Awesome, thank you. So I'll pass it on to Rosa as I share my screen for I'm sure the moment we've all been waiting for, which is our Zag Swag Raffle. 